we made it to Samaru, our next objective should be to head to Samaru City and find a way to meet with Lesser Lord Kusanali. And speaking of Lesser Lord Kusanali, even though we haven't heard too much about her, she doesn't seem to be the same deity who abducted your sister. But even so, people call Samaru the Nation of Wisdom, you know. If we can get a chance to meet the God of Wisdom, maybe she can give us some useful information! But, uh, Paimon doesn't know the way to Samaru City. Maybe we can climb up to that spot with the Statue of the Seven on it. That'll give us a way better view of things. Even if we can't see exactly where the city is, at least we'll be able to check for some smaller settlements nearby. Wait a second. Look! There's someone up ahead! Perfect timing! Now we can just ask for directions rather than wander around like lost adventurers. Hey there! <laughs> We're not from around here and seem to have gotten a little lost. We'd like to ask for some directions. Huh? Uh, did they not hear Paimon? Hey! You over there! Could you give us some directions? Huh? What's going on here? There's no way she could have missed that. Oh, wait! Could she be ignoring us? How dare she? Hmm. Well, even so, she might be heading someplace where we could find other people to ask. Let's keep our distance and follow her. When we get the chance, we'll just ask someone else for directions. Come on, let's follow her. Just keep quiet. Make sure she doesn't notice us. Huh? She just walked near that small waterfall and then suddenly vanished. Hmm. Let's go take a closer look. Paimon thought this cave would lead to a village or something, but uh, it looks like that's not the case. Look, she's sitting over there. Wait, she couldn't possibly be living here, could she? Uh, what should we do now? Do we try asking her for directions again? All right then. It's not like we have anyone else we can ask. Even if she's not very friendly, we just need her to point us in the right direction. That's all. Oh. Mmm. What a lovely smell. It's coming from that sensor over there. This is definitely not your typical place to call home, but at least it smells nice. Mmm. Maybe living here wouldn't be too bad after all. Huh? What's the matter? You don't look too good. What? Is the smell making you feel sick? Strange. Paimon doesn't feel anything. If he says that he's going to be all right, then there's absolutely nothing to worry about. Oh, are you awake now? Oh, thank goodness! Traveler, you're finally awake! Well, we're at... Uh... Good question. Where are we? 
Hyman was in such a panic when you passed out that she even forgot to ask what place this is. This is Gandarverville. It was originally built by scholars from Sumeru as a place to rest in the rainforest. Now it's mainly used by the forest rangers as a base of operations. My name is Kale. I'm a trainee forest ranger. My master and I found you passed out during our patrol, so we brought you here. Oh, no, no things are necessary. I didn't do anything, really. By the way, how are you feeling now? Any discomfort? Oh, <laughs> that's Master's herbal medicine you're tasting. He gave you some while you were unconscious. Uh, before I forget, Master mentioned you should take more medicine once you wake up. Kale, what's the matter? Were you trying to retrieve the medicine? As I've already told you, you must be careful with these. I'll get it for you once I am finished here. Uh, sorry, Master. <sighs> now, the Guide to Avidia Forest's Edible Fungi is clearly posted on our bulletin board, but if Farbode forgets which mushrooms to avoid one more time, I'll have no choice but to leave the guide somewhere a little more visible. Like, right smack on his forehead so others can remind him to be careful. Right? This is the second time he's come down with food poisoning this month. I'll be sure to give him a good talking to. Yes, please do. If, on the off chance, Farbode simply enjoys having little imaginary fairies dance before his eyes, then we'll just let him be. But, the next time he requires any of our medicine, be sure to charge him accordingly. So, how are you doing? Feeling better? Oh, this is my master, Forest Watcher Tainari. He is chief officer over all the rangers here in Gondarverville. I already informed Paimon about the reason you fell unconscious earlier. But now that you're awake, let me explain it for you as well. It is common practice for Sumeru scholars of certain darshans to dedicate themselves to training in meditation in isolated areas particularly the nearby forests. While meditating, they use a certain incense known as spirit borneal to help calm their minds as they enter a state of deep rumination. In hopes of asking directions, you two followed a scholar named Hapasia into her cave. The incense you smelled inside was the spirit borneal I just mentioned. That incense typically has no effect on most people, but for a very select few, it can have profound effects on one's cognition, as you experienced firsthand. Does that make sense? Very good. Now, answer me this. Did you feel anything after passing out? Say, any out-of-body experiences, or did you see anything while unconscious? Hmm. Kale? Let the others know to stop bringing their patrol logs here for now. Huh? W why Because these two will be staying here for the next few days. They can have my room and I'll bunk with Amir. Now get a move on and be sure to do as I've said. Yes, Master Tainari. Uh, wait, hold on a second. Uh, can you tell us what's going on? Sure, let me fill you in. I originally planned to send you on your way once you finished your medicine. However, it appears now that you should stay a while longer in Gandarvaville for further observation while you recuperate. Further observation? No need to be hasty. As long as you have the capacity to judge between right and wrong, I promise that you'll understand the gravity of the situation once I explain everything to you. Based on what you saw after smelling the incense and losing consciousness, we can conclude that you experienced a powerful hallucination, which suggests your mental state is not in the best of shape. If you're skeptical, have a whiff of this. Oh, are you okay? You're experiencing a similar sensation as when you passed out, aren't you? 
So even though your condition is stable as of now, if I were to haphazardly let you leave, it's highly likely that you'd suddenly pass out again somewhere else. The rainforest is home to many fierce animals and hazardous areas. If something were to happen to you again, I'm afraid you might not be so lucky. For now, I suggest you continue taking your medicine each day and avoid wandering off on your own, at least until you stop having adverse reactions to this kind of smell. Okay? Hmm. Good. Now, continue resting while I fire up another bowl of medicine for you. <sighs> Seriously? We just arrived in Sumeru and we're already having problems left and right! Paimon knows we're set on meeting Lesser Lord Kusanali as soon as possible, but you really don't look too good. It'd probably be best to let you recover first. Uh... Hey! Are you even listening to Paimon? Paimon's over here worrying about you, you know! What's weird? You mean how you're feeling now? You mean... the vision of tree roots and red skies you saw? But if those weren't hallucinations, what could they be? Well, considering how unique you are, Paimon trusts your judgment here, but why didn't you say anything about it to Tainari? If he misjudged your condition, then there's a chance you could get worse, right? Huh? You mean that Tainari already knows that what you saw weren't hallucinations? But if that's the case, why would he try to hide that from us? Oh, Paimon gets it now. That explains why you were so quiet earlier. Well, that settles it then. We'll stay here to rest up and figure out what's going on with your hallucinations. But it seems like asking Tainari might not be an option anymore. <sighs> what do you think we should do? Good idea. Kali's pretty friendly. We can ask her tomorrow about what she knows regarding the Dendro Archon and customs in Sumeru. All right, next let's see your right hand. Hmm, not bad. Uh, but please remember that you still need to be careful, understand? <sighs> yes, I will. By the way, Master, I still haven't received the patrol route for today. Look, Kale, today's patrol will be a long one, so you won't be coming along this time. Besides, there's a chance we may encounter... Well, you understand. But I have a vision too! <sighs> Am I useless to everyone now? Don't talk like that, Kale. This is not something you need to be worrying about right now. Ah, there you are. Uh, feeling any better? Since we'll be staying here for now, we thought we might as well try lending a hand around here. <laughs> Seems you're not the type to sit back and take it easy for a while, huh? Hmm. In that case, perhaps Kale could take you two for a patrol south of Gundarvaville for the day. And if you're feeling up to it, you can be responsible for cleaning the Statue of the Seven. Tenari, we're ready to head out. Got it! I'll be right there! All right. We'll be heading into the forest now. I'll leave any further details to Kale. Yes, you can count on me. So, Kale, what exactly are we going to be doing today? Tainari mentioned cleaning the statue just now, but, uh, that doesn't really sound like the job for a ranger. Well, a forest ranger's responsibilities can be pretty diverse. We handle a variety of tasks. Like checking the condition of outlying roads, maintaining forest facilities, ensuring fire prevention standards are met, and providing assistance to travelers and locals. As for Master, well, he has to handle more dangerous areas of the rainforest. Today we can perform routine checks on the pathway lamps as we make our way to the Statue of the Seven. Paimon, traveler, this way! You can leave the task of checking the lamps to me! In the meantime, you two can keep an eye out for anything unusual. 
Nothing wrong with these two lamps. Let's move to the next ones. Oh, this lamp seems to be getting a little wobbly. Let me make a note of it. Hmm, no problems with this lamp. Good. The statue of the Seven is up on top of that large rock formation. You must have seen it when you came down this road before. It's pretty high up there, isn't it? Don't worry. If you're afraid you can't make it up there, I'm sure Master wouldn't mind if you don't clean the statue. Oh? I guess I'll leave it up to you then. There's not much footing once you reach the statue, so be careful up there. Paimon will fly up with you and help you with those hard-to-reach areas. Um, by the way, Kale, do you know anything about the Dendro Archon? You know, what's she like? Uh, that depends. Are you referring to Greater Lord Rukudavata or Lesser Lord Kusanali? Huh? Greater Lord Rukudavata? Oh, is that the name of the former Dendro Archon? Uh-huh. Greater Lord Rukudavata was Sumeru's first Dendro Archon. She created the rainforest as well as the Wall of Samiel around the desert. Her works provided a means of peaceful living for everyone. To the people of Sumeru, she's not only a symbol of wisdom, but also of power and kindness. Unfortunately, she disappeared in a great calamity that occurred a few hundred years ago. According to what Master has told me, the sages later found the newly born Dendro Archon and whisked her back to Sumeru. To celebrate the reinstatement of their lost deity, the sages dubbed her Lesser Lord Kusanali and let her reside in the sanctuary of Sarastana. Uh-huh. Then what happened? Well, and then... Ah... Uh... Uh, I'm not too sure what happened, to be honest. Huh? You're not too sure? But aren't you from Sumeru? Yeah, I'm from Sumeru. Uh, but... Maybe it's difficult to discuss this topic with strangers. If that's the case, then don't worry, we understand. No, no, it's not that. I'm not trying to hide something from you. Besides, I don't consider you two strangers. <laughs> because you two know Amber, right? Wait, Amber? You mean... Yes, that's her. I once lived in Mondstadt for a while, and she helped me a lot during that time. You could even say that she helped me become a new person. There's no one like Amber. She lives life to the fullest while always adhering to her strong sense of justice. She's ready to answer the call for action at any moment, but is also very understanding of others. She's like the spark that lights the fire in everyone's heart around her. If you ask me, she's a prime example of a true outrider. She's the first person anyone coming to Mondstadt will meet. You can't help but be enthralled by her charm and enthusiasm, causing you to fall in love with the lands of Mondstadt and... Uh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, Paimon thought the work of Outriders was a little different from what you just described, but one thing's for sure, you really like Amber. Uh, <laughs> sorry. I was rambling on just now. It must have sounded kind of weird. <laughs> it's alright, Kale. Knowing that you're a friend of Amber somehow makes Paimon suddenly feel a lot closer to you. So, how do you know that we've met Amber? Well, after I return to Sumeru, Amber and I have stayed in touch by writing each other letters. In one letter, she mentioned that Mondstadt was attacked by a fearsome dragon, but the city was saved by a mysterious blonde traveler and their floating companion. I knew you two were the ones she mentioned in the letter the moment I saw you. But, uh... Considering everything you've been through that day, I thought it'd be inappropriate to bring it up. Ah, so that's how you knew! Yep, so please know that you two have my complete trust, really. I wish I could tell you more about the Dendro Archon, but I have been away from Sumeru for some time, and I haven't read any books. Sorry. That's alright, you've already helped us a lot! We had never even heard of Greater Lord Ruka Devata or the Sanctuary of Surathana until you mentioned them. Oh, I'm happy that was helpful. There is one thing I want to ask, though. 
Why do you two want to know about the Dendro Archon? Hmm. So that's why you're here. Thank you for telling me your story. Don't mention it. We are friends after all, right? <laughs> all right. We have a statue to clean. You both have my thanks. Well, you two are up there cleaning. I'll go ahead and inspect the forest canopy. Let's meet back here shortly. Huh. Now that Paimon looks at it, the deity that's carved on the statue is kind of small. Hmm. Do you think she's supposed to be Greater Lord Rukudavata or Lesser Lord Kusanali? The name does seem to fit the statue somehow. Hmm. Well, anyway, we'll have to figure that out later. Let's get started on cleaning the statue. Paimon will fly up and take care of the top and you clean everything below. Kale, we're back! Welcome back! You must be tired after all that climbing. Let's take a little break. I brought some fruit and water for us. Yay! Food! What kind of goodies did you bring? Hey, don't be a party pooper. It's not like Kale is a stranger or anything. Besides, the best way to compliment a chef is to show passion for their food. Xiangling taught Paimon that. I prepared a nice portable dish that forest rangers like to eat called Pita Pockets. I hope you'll like them. Uh, wh whoops! Ah, no! You dropped it on the ground! Not to worry. I wrapped a few layers of oiled paper around each pita. They should be fine. Oh, I'm nearly had a heart attack there. Those pitas are amazing! You're quite the cook, Kale. Thank goodness you wrapped them in paper. Paimon wouldn't have been able to sleep at night knowing something so tasty had been wasted. <laughs> you really know how to compliment the chef, Paimon. Since you liked it so much, I'll be sure to give you a copy of the recipe sometime. I'll even include all my personal cooking pointers, so you'll be making your own pita pockets in no time. Yay! Thanks, Kale! It's hard to believe someone as diligent as you could have clumsy moments, too. Oh, <laughs> uh, I guess it happens from time to time. So, uh, Kale, don't you think that Tainari's a little too strict with you? He won't let you touch anything without his permission. Paimon knocks stuff over all the time flying around the Traveler, but he's never said anything. Everyone has their clumsy moments. No, no, you've got the wrong idea about Master. Uh, <laughs> sure, he may seem a bit harsh at first, but with some time, you'll see that he's actually very kind-hearted. I've heard the veteran rangers say that Master is from some ancient and mysterious race that is known for their cunning wit and reclusive nature, but Master is actually very kind at heart. Oh, by the way, you've heard of the Academia, right? Well, there's a group called... Uh... Um... Um, uh... Uh... Um, boo... Something? <laughs> well, anyway, because Master does a lot of research on plants, Sages from the Academia have written him many times, inviting him to take up an official position there. But Master declines their offers every time, saying, Sumeru City is too noisy. It'd be bad for my ears. <laughs> Seems you already know him well. Anyway, I'm sure the Sages were not happy about his responses. Master could obviously have a bright future in the Academia but he insists on sticking to the path of a forest watcher. Every day he helps the locals of the forest and passes on his extensive knowledge to trainees like me. In fact, Master's the one who taught me how to make pita pockets. Really? Paimon would have never guessed that. Oh, speaking of Tainari, he was the one who took care of you after finding you passed out yesterday. He even carried you all the way here. Paimon's still kind of upset, though. He kept scolding Paimon the entire way here. Oh no, I'm sorry. Master might have been overreacting a little. But, uh, it's mostly because Paimon wouldn't stop yelling, Why, oh why, is he going to die? It probably started to get under Master's skin after a while. <laughs>